Welcome to the Chic Assignment for March 2022. Hello everyone, Jennifer L. Scott here and welcome to The Daily Connoisseur. The Chic Assignment continues and this month I have another great one for you. I'd like to thank the Chic Society for bringing us this wonderful series. The Chic Society is my private membership group here on YouTube. Membership is only $1.99 a month. We have a vodcast every Friday and I go live or do a Zoom call with the Chic Society once a month and we even have a pen pal program. So I hope that you'll consider supporting The Daily Connoisseur this year, you could click the join button down below or the link in the description box. Okay, let's jump into the assignments. Chic assignment number one is to enjoy Vivaldi's Spring from the Four Seasons. This is another one that I cannot believe we haven't covered yet. This month we're going to learn about Antonio Lucio Vivaldi, who was an Italian Baroque composer. I'm pretty sure that everyone who's watching this video has heard of Vivaldi's The Four Seasons, which is a group of four violin concertos that give musical expression to each season. So of course, spring is coming this month. The spring equinox is on March 20th this year, so I thought it would be great for us to listen to Spring from the first movement. So this month I'm sharing a wonderful performance from the Capital String Quartet and they are performing this. It's just over three minutes long and it's a beautiful smooth performance. I love this one. This also might be a piece that many of you recognize but you couldn't quite put your finger on what it was. So now we all know and we're educating ourselves on this. So we're going to learn more about Vivaldi in the mid-month check-in. Chic assignment number two is to explore the poetry of T.S. Eliot. If you're new to the Chic assignments, we alternate each month. One month we study a painter and the next month we study a poet. So we are learning about T.S. Eliot this month. He was an American poet, essayist, publisher, playwright, literary critic, and editor. And he's considered one of the 20th century's major poets. So he was born in 1888 and he died in 1965. And at the end of today's video, I'm going to read to you Whispers of Immortality. But in the meantime, I'm going to leave a book of his poetry linked down below, as well as a free resource where you could read his poems online. I am looking forward to diving into the poetry of T.S. Eliot this month. Chic assignment number three, it's that time of year. We are going to prepare our 10 item wardrobe for the upcoming change in season. So most of us here are going into spring. Our Southern Hemisphere friends are going into fall, but this is the time where we need to be intentional about the transition. So I want you to go through your clothes from this time last year and be very honest with yourself. If you didn't get rid of what you should have, now is the time to do it. So I'm not just talking about things that are really worn out or don't fit. But I'm talking about a shift in style. Let's say you have clothing that does not match your true style, but you're hanging on to it because maybe it was pricey, maybe it was a gift from someone, maybe you just feel like maybe you'll wear it this year. I don't know what it is, but don't be afraid to donate and give it away. I think it's wonderful to donate your clothes to the local thrift store and other people can find the treasure, right? And that frees up space for your clothes that you are going to bring into your wardrobe this year. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to analyze our wardrobes. I'm going to share some spring wardrobe updates, of course, on the channel this month, so you can look forward to those videos as well. Chic assignment number four is to journal your joy. So last month we journaled our gratitude, and a lot of you did this with me, and I found that when I journaled my gratitude, it magnified the things that I was grateful for. So we're going to do a little twist on that this month, and we are going to journal our joy. Now, the things that bring us joy might not necessarily be the things on our gratitude list, okay? There might be a little bit of a crossover there for sure, but there's a different tint to this one. And of course, you could do it however you want. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. Just do it in the way that works right for you. If you need a prompt, you could write 10 things that come to the top of your mind that bring you joy. Or as you go throughout your day, if something happens that just brings you that shot of joy, write it down in your journal. So I've been thinking about this and I was explaining this to my kids. We were talking about joy and that feeling you get, a rush of pure pleasure, like when you laugh at something that's hysterical. I had a friend of mine this month and maybe I'll get her permission to share it with you in the check-in. She said something that was so funny. It was like the funniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just reduced to tears. I have not laughed that hard in public in so long. It was wonderful. It brought me so much joy. 
things like that that can bring you joy or a cup of tea. We're going to notice the small things in our life that bring us joy. So this might be different from what we are grateful for, okay? And I think that as we do this, we are going to magnify what brings us joy in life and we'll find that more things bring us joy than ever before. Okay, I'm going to close by reading T.S. Eliot's Whispers of Immortality to you. So here we go. Webster was much possessed by death and saw the skull beneath the skin and breastless creatures underground leaned backward with a lipless grin. Daffodil bulbs instead of balls stared from the sockets of the eyes. He knew that thought clings round dead limbs, tightening its lusts and luxuries. Dawn, I suppose, was such another who found no substitute for sense to seize and clutch and penetrate, expert beyond experience. He knew the anguish of the marrow, the ague of the skeleton. No contact possible to flesh allayed the fever of the bone. Grishkin is nice, her Russian eye is underlined for emphasis. Uncorseted, her friendly bust gives promise of pneumatic bliss. The couched Brazilian jaguar compels the scampering marmoset. With subtle effluence of cat, Grishkin has a maisonette. The sleek Brazilian jaguar does not in its arboreal gloom distill so rank a feline smell as Grishkin in a drawing room. And even the abstract entities circumambulate her charm, but our lot crawls between dry ribs to keep our metaphysics warm. So this poem, Whispers of Immortality, was written between 1915 and 1918. And the poem was published originally in the September issue of The Little Review and collected in June 1919 in a volume entitled Poems published by Leonard and Virginia Woolf's Hogarth Press. And the title is a fainter parody of William Wordsworth's, who we discussed in a previous Sheik assignment, his poem called Imitations of Immortality. So this poem is about life, about death, about lust. This poem stood out to me because of this one thing. Um, this line, the second stanza that says, daffodil bulbs instead of balls stared from the sockets of the eyes. He knew that thought clings round dead limbs, tightening its lusts and luxuries. We planted um, daffodil bulbs in the fall and they just came up. So <laughs> I thought that that would be appropriate even though this is kind of a morbid poem. But I hope that you enjoyed this. We are going to read more of T.S. Eliot's poetry in the mid-month check-in. I really look forward to doing this chic assignment with you and I'm definitely writing you down as one of the reasons why I have joy this month. Thank you so much to the Chic Society for bringing us this series. I look forward to seeing you in the mid-month check-in. In the meantime, keep calm and remain classy. Goodbye, everyone.